Okay, welcome to example number eight. Uh, what we have is two five gram point charges here and here, both positive, uh, with a one meter thread for both of them. And they're repelling each other because they're both like charges, each charged with 100 nanocoulombs, as shown in this figure. And what we're trying to do is determining, determine this angle theta between the vertical and the thread. Okay, so the first step in this kind of problem is to draw a diagram, which is already drawn for us, and then draw a free body diagram for one of the point charges. So we'll first start off with one of these uh, charges. Let's go to the left side here and draw the forces acting on that. We have up along the string, this would be the tension, and then going straight down would be the force of gravity, the weight, and that there must be some force that's pushing it to the left, and that is the repulsive force. I'm just going to call that F sub E for that electrostatic force. Of course, I could draw a force here, tension, and gravity down, and electrostatic force, and by symmetry we'll see they're both the same, but we really only need to study one free body diagram. Okay, so the next step is once we've drawn a free body diagram, we realize that the system is in equilibrium. So that means that the sum of the forces along the x-axis, and my x-axis is going to be to the right, and my y-axis is straight up, will balance out to give you zero, and along with that is the sum of the forces in the y will balance out to give you zero as well. So along the x-axis, we have something cancelling out. We have that electrostatic force going to the left and then that tension partly going up and to the right. So the horizontal component of Ft, so that would be Ftx, must be balanced out by the electrostatic force. That's equal to zero. And if we look at along the vertical axis here, we have the vertical actually component of the tension, Fty here, must be balanced out by the force of gravity going down, Fg. So let's take each of these uh, independently um, down one more step. Ftx must be equal to Fe. Uh, Ftx, now over here, this is the angle theta right in here. That's this angle right in here. So Ftx is the Ft times the sine of theta. Ft times sine of theta. Hopefully you recall that if I have Ft this way, Fty is shown right here, and then Ftx is shown there, and this is theta, and if we want to get the x component Ftx in terms of Ft and that theta that will involve the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's sine theta equals Ftx over Ft. So Ftx must be equal to Ft times sine theta. And that's equal to the electrostatic force and that is equal to K times Q1 times Q2. So we'll just say Q squared all over r squared. Now r, by the way, is this distance in here. That's r. Okay. Um, let's go take this right side a little bit further as well. We have fty equals fg. fty would be equal to ft times the cosine of theta, which is equal to the weight of this, which is equal to m times g. And we are trying to solve for theta, and I think a little trick we can employ here would be to get rid of the tension, because we don't know that, and if we divide equation 1 by equation 2, uh, we'll get Ft sine theta divided by Ft cosine theta is equal to kq squared over r squared divided by mg. And we'll see that Ft cancels out, and we'll get sine theta over cos theta, which will be equal to tan theta, which is equal to k q squared all over m times g times r squared. So we're almost ready to get that angle theta. We know that k is Coulomb's constant. We know q is 100 nanocoulombs. We know m is 5 grams, which we need to convert to kilograms. g is 9.8. And then now we need to find r. So that's where the one meter comes in. We have theta here, we have one meter, and we, hopefully you can see this triangle in here. 
And if you look at it, sine theta would be equal to half of r divided by the length of the string, which is 1 meter. So r would be equal to 2 sine theta. So let's employ that into here. And we will get kq squared mg times sine theta times 2 quantity squared. And I'm just looking at this and thinking, oh, this is going to be a bit tough. Because uh, tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta equals kq squared. 4mg sine squared theta. Hmm. Well, this is a little bit harder than I expected it to be, actually. So um, I guess what I'll do is sine cube theta all over cosine theta equals kq squared over 4mg. And then I can substitute at, and numbers in here. I have 9 to the power of 9. Q is 100 nanocoulomb, so it's 100 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Quantity squared divided by 4 times the mass, which is 5 to the power of negative 3. And G is 9.8. And let's see what that numerically comes out to be. I get 4.59 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And uh, that's equal to sine cubed theta over cosine theta. And I'm thinking, how am I going to solve this? And the only way I could think of it at this point is to basically graph this line, this horizontal line, with this function of sine cubed theta over cos theta. So what I did is basically I plotted two graphs uh, on my calculator called this y1 and called this y2 and I found the intersection on my calculator uh, which worked out to theta equaling 4.42 degrees if you keep all the digits. Uh, this was a little bit more difficult than I expected especially at the very end of it. Um, Obviously, it would, be, it would have been a better problem had we given you the angle and maybe found the charge Q or found maybe the length of the string. So this was a little bit challenging at the end. Okay, that's it for example number eight.